It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. Good to have all of you here. If you have your Bibles today, you would open to John chapter 19. John chapter 19. I've simply entitled this message, The Blood of Christ. In just a few weeks, we're going to be celebrating the resurrection of Christ. And uh, I think as we get ready for that, we need to understand that He died for you and I. It is so amazing to me that Jesus left heaven and came down here to die for me. Because I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think I would have done it. Knowing who I am and and stuff I've been into, I don't think I would have came and died for me. I wouldn't have thought I was worthy. But Jesus Christ loved me enough to leave heaven and come down here and walk among sinners, walk among people that would reject him, spit on him, persecute him, ridicule him and then die on Calvary's cross for me. How amazing that in all the world he loved me that much. Now I understand he loved all of y'all too. Amen. Amen. And he still does. That's a good thing. We always talk about he loved us. He loves me. Instead of putting a D on the end of that, put an S on that, because he didn't quit. Amen. He loves me. Amen. All right. St. John chapter 19, verse 17 and 18. And then I'm going to drop down to verse 34. And he bearing his cross went forth into a place called the place of the skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and two others with him on either side, one and Jesus in the midst. Verse 34, but one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forthwith came there out blood and water. And again, I've entitled this message, The Blood of Christ. Amen. And I want to talk to you today about that blood, how precious it is, what it'll do for you today. Amen. Uh, there are a lot of people out there in the world that say that we have a bloody religion. Uh, uh, and I want to say, yes, we do. Amen. Uh, uh, now, we don't have a bloody religion the way the Jews do. We don't offer sacrifices on the altar. Uh, uh, but I believe in the blood of Jesus Christ. I believe if you're going to heaven, you've got to be saved by the blood. There's no other way to get to glory. Amen. Uh, it's through the blood of Christ. Uh, and I believe that you got to have that blood applied to your life and your heart. It's got to be put in there. Uh, by God the Father, uh, uh, and I believe it takes the blood, amen. Uh, uh, but it said as a soldier, uh, uh, pierced his side, forthwith came out uh, uh, blood and water. Uh, uh, and I want you to understand, that means uh, uh, that he shed every drop of blood that he had, amen. There was no blood left in him uh, uh, when he was done, Uh and I have studied uh, uh, the crucifixion of Christ. Uh, uh, and we're going to look at some of this in a couple of weeks. Uh, uh, but it talks about uh, uh, that it was nearly impossible uh, for Jesus Christ to carry that cross uh, up Calvary because he had already lost so much blood uh, uh, being scourged and beaten uh, uh, that he would have been in a shock uh, from the loss of blood. Uh, uh, but knowing who he was, uh, he still had the strength uh, uh, to pick that cross up and carry it up Calvary uh, and still have enough blood left him and enough strength to hang on Calvary's cross uh, for six hours for you and I. Uh, uh, that is the divinity and the sovereignty of God. Uh, I had nothing else uh, uh, because a mortal man couldn't have lasted that long. Uh, uh, but I'm grateful today uh, that Jesus Christ done it uh, and he done it for me. Uh, uh, so let's slow down a minute here uh, and just look uh, at the blood of Christ uh, and what it will do for you and I. Uh, uh, number one, uh, 
It is a blood of the New Testament. Amen. Uh, uh, Matthew chapter 26, uh, uh, verse 28. Uh, uh, Jesus said, For this is my blood of, of the New Testament, uh, which is shed for many uh, for the remission of sins. Uh, he's getting ready here uh, uh, to have communion for the last time uh, with his disciples. Uh, and as he gives them the wine to drink, uh, he tells them, This is my blood uh, of the New Testament, uh, which is shed for many uh, for the remission of sins. Uh, let me go ahead and read the next couple of verses here. Uh, Hebrews chapter 9, uh, verse 16 and 17. Uh, For where a testament is, uh, there must also of necessity uh, uh, be the death of the testator. Uh, for a testament uh, is a force uh, after men are dead. Uh, otherwise, it is of no strength at all uh, while the testator liveth. Uh, uh, in other words, uh, uh, you can draw up a last will and testament, uh, uh, but that thing is no good uh, until the one that draws it up dies. Uh, and once you die, uh, that last will and testament goes into effect. Uh, your executor uh, uh, will take it to the lawyer, they'll read that thing, uh, and they'll enact everything that's in it. Uh, uh, Jesus Christ tells us uh, uh, His blood uh, uh, was the New Testament uh, uh, that God had given us uh, and given us that testament. Uh, he said, you need to understand something. Uh, it's not going to be good. Uh, It'll be null and void unless I die. And when he died, that testament became effective for all of us. He said it is the New Testament given for the remission of sins. He had to die. He had to shed his blood for we to have remission of sins so that you and I could come to him and be washed in the blood. Amen. To have his blood applied. Uh, but it would have been no good uh, had he not died, amen. Uh, he had to die uh, uh, so that you and I uh, could be saved, amen. Without the death of the testator, the testament can be no good. I praise God that he died to make that testament for you and I good, amen. Number two. It is the blood of the bought church. Amen? Amen. Acts chapter 20 verse 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers uh, to feed the church of God uh, which he hath purchased uh, with his own blood. Uh, oh, now I want you to understand something today. Uh, uh, this building is not the church. Uh, this building is a meeting house. Uh, it is where the church gathers at. Uh, you and I are the church. Uh, uh, Jesus said this, uh, uh, Upon this rock uh, I build my church. Uh, and He wasn't talking about a building. Uh, he was talking about the people. Amen. We are the church. Uh, the church is not an organization. Uh, the church is an organism. Uh, it's a life. It's well, amen. Uh, you and I, the Bible says in Corinthians, uh, know you not that you are the temple of God uh, and the Holy Ghost resides in you? Uh, we need to understand uh, uh, that when we're saved, uh, we become the temple of God uh, and the Holy Ghost moves within us. Uh, if you sit here today uh, and you tell me, uh, uh, listen, uh, that I'm saved by the grace of God, then I tell you that the Holy Spirit is within you. Uh, and if the Holy Spirit's within you, uh, sometimes uh, you just got to get up and shout. Uh, sometimes, listen, uh, you just got to move a little bit, amen, uh, and let the Holy Spirit uh, have His way. Hallelujah. Oh, listen, when it gets time for meeting at the church, it's time to uncross your arm, uncross your legs, relax, and get ready to shout, amen. He said that we need to feed the flock which he hath purchased with his own blood. He bought you with his blood. Amen. 
I don't think y'all grabbing a hold of that. First Peter chapter 1, verse 18 and 19. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ uh, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Uh, he has bought us. He has redeemed us. Uh, I want you to understand real quick what the word redeemed means. Uh, oh, when I was growing up, uh, I used to go around to the houses and apartments in the neighborhood uh, and I'd collect Coke bottles uh, and I'd take them things back to the store uh, and you could sell them back to the store for a nickel apiece. Amen. And, uh, and I asked the way as a kid I used to raise a little money uh, and I'd carry them things back and get me some money amen uh, sometimes I could get about 20 of them things uh, and I'd get a dollar and I'd be so happy uh, I had a dollar uh, and I know y'all sitting there thinking well you ain't bought nothing with a dollar well way back then you could buy something with a dollar amen uh, a dollar don't buy you nothing today amen uh, I don't even think it'll buy a candy bar anymore uh, uh, but it, listen you got to have money to buy stuff now. Uh, uh, but I used to redeem those bottles, and that's what it was called. The Coca-Cola company was buying back their own property. Amen. Uh, and the Lord said, I will redeem you uh, through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, in other words, He will buy us back. Uh, we are born into this world with a sin nature. Uh, you have heard me say this many times. Uh, uh, when you have a child, uh, you will never have to teach that child uh, uh, to tell a lie uh, because it is their nature. Uh, and they will grow up learning to lie. Uh, you will walk in the room and say, who broke that? I didn't, he did. I didn't, she did. And you'll start lying through your teeth so you don't get in trouble. It is a natural urge for us to tell a lie. It's in our nature. But what happens is that God buys us back and brings us into the fold and then we learn to tell the truth. Amen. We learn that God is the truth and every man a liar. Amen. That's the word. Uh, uh, listen, uh, but you never have to teach a kid to lie. You do have to teach them to tell the truth. Amen. Uh, you do have to teach them the things uh, that they need to know because the Bible said if we'll bring up a child in the way they should go when they're old, they won't depart from it. Amen. we got to bring them up in church. Uh, we got to teach them the right way. Amen. Uh, uh, so that when they're older, uh, they'll have a foundation uh, that they can fall back on it uh, and stand on that. Amen. But as we read, it said the Lord has redeemed us. He bought us back. He brought us back uh, so that we wouldn't have that sin nature uh, because the devil has taken over. Uh, he has begun to teach us the wrong thing. God said, I'm going to bring you back uh, and I'm going to teach you what's right. Amen. He redeemed us. Amen. Right. Amen. He bought us back. He bought back his own property. Amen. The old devil had done stole us away from God. And believe it or not, he's still trying to steal you away from God. Amen? Now, I, I'm not saying you get lost. Once you're saved, you're always saved. You can't get lost again. But you can backslide. You can not walk away from God. And God wants to buy you back. Don't let the devil steal you away from God. The devil wants to steal your joy. He wants to steal your peace. He wants to steal your happiness. He wants to steal everything that God has blessed you with. And as a child of God, you need to stand up and say, No, these are my blessings. You ain't going to get them. And God possesses me. You can't possess me. The Holy Spirit possesses me. And as long as he's in me, the devil can't possess me. So since he can't possess me, he's going to fight me. He's going to come at me every way he can. Paul wrote in the book of Romans, he said, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Paul said, it's a law that any time you're trying to do something good, the devil's going to fight you. That's why I can stand up here and tell you it is a fact. If you're living for God and you're going to try to do something for God this week, 
The devil's going to fight you this week. That's why we need to be in church praying and getting some strength and getting ready for the fight ahead. I need to be here praying and saying, all right, God, I don't know what's coming, but I know it's coming. I need some strength. I need to be ready. I need my armor on. I know there's a fight ahead because I'm going to witness to somebody. I'm going to praise God this week. And the more I do it, the more the devil fights me. And he fights me more than y'all. Because if he can make the preacher fail and fall, y'all fall. He gets after the preachers, amen? All I got was a that's right. Boy, you should jump. You should have jumped up and hollered, Amen. Devil don't get after you. Yes, sir. Amen. amen. He gets after preachers. Amen. amen. Then he loves to get after deacons. Amen. Then he loves to get after Sunday school teachers. Amen. Then he loves to get after them folks that are singing. Amen. He gets after the choir members. Amen. He gets after parents. He gets after children. <laughs> For somebody that prays a lot at school, I couldn't hear no amen from you. He gets after the children. There we go, amen. Give me an amen back there. Hallelujah. We've been bought and redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. He paid for us. Now I want you to think about something. When I go to the store and I'm going to buy me something, I look through it. Alright, if I'm at the clothes rack, I'm saying, alright, I don't like that color, I don't like that color, and I don't like that color. That's, I like that one. Oh, that's the wrong size. You ever done that? Put, oh, that's the one I want. And it's the wrong size. Put it back and Keep flipping through, trying to find what you want. You get down to the produce section. You want the best, amen? And you'll pick up them maters and you'll squeeze them. Now they ain't no good. You squeezed them. Ain't nobody going to eat that. And that's going to be thrown away. You might as well go ahead and buy it now. You pick up everything. Look at it. You want the best, amen? I walk through that store and I'll see that bin over there with all that okra in it. And I'll look at it. If it looks kind of Nasty and dried up, I just leave it there. But if it ain't, it looks good, man, I'll load two or three pounds of that stuff up and get it up there. Y'all say that's a lot of okra. Not at my house. <laughs> we, we'll eat some okra at the house now. What I'm saying is you choose the best. Think about this. God wants to buy you back. I'm glad he didn't come down here to buy the best. Right. Amen. If he had have come down and looked at me, he would have mashed on me and set me down and that would have been it. I'd have been the mashed mater that nobody wants. Amen? Amen. And y'all say, did he say mater? Yes, I did. Amen. Y'all know what I'm talking about. If I got to get city-fied with you, I'll do it. A tomato or tomato if you're from overseas. Down here, it's a mater, amen? amen? He might have said, that's a rotten mater and throwed it away. He might have looked at me and said, that's nasty looking okra. I don't want it, amen? He might have looked and said, that's a boy that I can't make anything out of him. Uh, uh, he's just too far in the world. Uh, there's too much sin on him. I want the best. Uh, I'm glad God didn't come down here to buy the best. Amen. Uh, I'm glad God found me. Uh, and I'm going to tell you, He found me uh, in the projects. Amen. Uh, he found me in a place uh, where people with money wouldn't go. Uh, God came down looking for me. Amen. Uh, because I'm the one He spoke to that night, not nobody else. I'm glad God came down looking for me said I'll buy that one amen, amen. amen. by the world standards the world would say he'll never amount to anything huh? and God said I can make something out of him amen I'm glad God bought me amen. think about it some of y'all sitting here all egotistical and conceited and sitting there thinking well I was pretty good I know why he got me <laughs> really 
Pride goeth before destruction, according to Proverbs. Be careful. I am so thankful when he redeemed me or bought me back. He wasn't looking for the best. He said, I can make him good. I can fix him. I want him. I want her. I want her. That's what he said. Because none of us, by the worldly standards, were worth being saved and going to heaven. But God has different standards. God has different ideals. God's ways are higher than our ways and His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And God knows what He can do with us. Amen. 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 God knows what He can make out of each of us. That was a long number two. Number three. It is the blood of the justified. Justified means to absolve, to acquit, to be guiltless. Romans chapter 5, verse 9. Much more then, being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from the wrath to come. If we are justified by His blood, that means we'll stand before the judge justified never sinned. Amen? Justified. Uh, uh, that means that when we are saved, uh, when God looks at us, God no longer sees sin. Uh, being justified means uh, that your sin has been taken away. Your record has been cleared. Amen? Uh, if they pull up your old record up, uh, uh, there's nothing on it. Uh, uh, there's been several things that I've done in my lifetime, uh, and I'd have to go down and tell Gary, i say, look, uh, uh, I need uh, a background check run. They'd run that thing. Uh, it come back, no record, everything's clean, ain't nothing about you. Uh, when I joined the military, uh, and I had to get a top secret security classification, uh, uh, they run my files through the FBI, uh, the CIA, and some other organization, uh, uh, and they checked me and said, everything's good. Give him the clearance. Uh, uh, so I've had to have this done many times, amen, uh, that they'd have to check and see uh, about my past, amen. Uh, uh, but I'm glad that when I'm saved, uh, when I become justified, uh, uh, God clears out my past. Uh, so when you look at it, uh, there's nothing there to look at. Uh, uh, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, uh, their sins and iniquities uh, will I remember no more. Uh, when God saves you, uh, He washes all of your sin away. He cleans your record up. Uh, and there's nothing for Him to look at. Uh, uh, now there does come a problem as we're walking in this world. Uh, because God cannot see the sin I've done when I before I was saved, uh, but you can. People can. And people will throw your past up in your face all the time. They'll bring it up and throw it at you. You can't do this because this is what you used to be. How many people do you know got saved on Sunday, went to work on Monday, and told their co-workers, I got saved yesterday. Well, it won't last. You'll be back out doing what you used to do in a couple of weeks. It won't last. If you're truly saved, it will last. Amen? Amen. Because truly being saved means you don't want to sin anymore and you do your best to stay away from sin. Being justified means God don't remember my past, but you can. You can remember where I grew up and the things I've done. And you can bring that up to me. Well, I know what you used to be. Yeah, but that ain't what I am now. And it's not what I'm going to be when I get to glory. Amen. Amen. We all have a past. Every one of you sitting here has got one. And for some of us, it's worse than others. Right. Amen. Amen. Now, for several years, I worked as a private investigator. And I'm going to tell you something. If I want to, I can dig up some dirt in your life. Amen. Everyone, I don't have no skeletons in my closet. Yeah, right. Do you really want me to dig up and find out? I'm telling you right now, I don't want anybody digging in my past. I know my past. And I'm going to leave it there. there I don't do those things anymore. Amen. I left all of that. It's done. And I have moved forward with Jesus Christ. I'm justified. Amen. 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 My past is washed away. Gone. And when I stand before the Lord, 
when everybody stands before the Lord, he's going to see one of two things. He's going to see the blood or no blood. He will see blood or sin. If you've been saved and he looks at you, all he's going to see is the blood. And he'll say, enter into the joy of the Lord. You've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many. And you'll enter in. And if he sees sin, he'll say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. And you'll walk off into hell. We are justified by the blood. Number four, it is the blood of conscience. Hebrews 9 and 14, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered Himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? It is the blood of our conscience. The blood will cleanse our conscience that we will want to work for God, to do the work of the Lord. What is the work of the Lord? That we love one another and love our enemies as ourselves. How many of y'all love everybody sitting here? Amen. Oh Lord, I give me an altar call. There wasn't enough faith. How many of y'all love everybody sitting here? Amen. Amen. Now how many of y'all love your enemies? Amen. Yeah, we got problems with that one, don't we? Huh? It's hard to love somebody that really hates you. Somebody that loved to egg your house. Somebody loved to throw rocks through your window. Somebody loved to key your car. It's hard to love them people, ain't it? It's hard to love them people that have different ideas than what we have. I want to take down all the Confederate statues. And we get upset. But the Bible said you got to love everybody. You got to love them. Now listen to me. Y'all have heard me preach this a million times. You have to love everybody, but you don't have to like their ways. Amen? Amen. Amen. Because I love my children. I love them no matter what they do, but I don't always like their ways. Amen. Amen? They make bad decisions sometimes, and I don't like it. But I will always love them. They will always be mine. But they do things sometimes that upset me. Don't mean I don't love them. Just means I get upset. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Listen. God loves us no matter what we do. And sometimes we get mad with God. We turn our backs on God. We run from God. We hide from God. But God does not ever stop loving you. God loves you. God wants to take you in, nurture you, love you, protect you, feed you, clothe you, do everything He can for you. But as you and I are saved, and we have this new conscience about us, this conscience, which is the Spirit in there, tells you when you come to a point in the road where there's a temptation on one side, God's on the other. And that Holy Spirit, God said, with every temptation, I make a way of escape. And when you get to that fork in the road and you see that temptation, most of the time we don't look. We just, hey, look, I like that. You go that way. If you look around, there's a way not to go because God made a way of escape. Take the other way. Don't go toward the wrong way. Amen? Amen. Had a lady up. At uh, this place where we used to take the groceries uptown, asked me if I'd take her to the bus stop in Atlanta. She was going out of town to see kin people. I worked in Atlanta all my life, and I could get anywhere in Atlanta I wanted to go. But I've been down here for 10 years, well, a little more than that, and they've changed all the street signs in Atlanta, and they've made this, this way, and this, this, this. And I said, I got an idea where it said, I'm going to get you there. And I'm going down. I said, there it is. And I turned down this road so I could turn around. It was one-way street, and I was going the wrong way. So I stopped and pulled over. I said, there ain't nothing coming. I'm going to swing back around, make a U-turn real quick. I started making my U-turn, and the police pulled right up next to me and flipped the blue light on. She said, can I help you? I said, yeah, I'm trying to find a bus station. She said, it's right there on that corner. 
She said, you know you're going the wrong way? I said, yes, ma'am. I'm trying to get turned around right now. She said, all right, don't let it happen again. She drove off. I went and turned around. Sometimes we get going the wrong way. Sometimes we need to make a U-turn. Sometimes we need to get back on the straight and the narrow. It's easier sometimes to walk the wide, broad way, but God said the way to heaven is straight and narrow. We need to make a U-turn and get back on the right path. Amen? Our conscience is telling us, go the right way. Let's see if we move on real quick. Number five is the blood of cleansing. 1 John 1, 7, But if you walk in the light, as He in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanseth us from all sin. 1 John 1, 9, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Revelation 1, 5, and from Jesus Christ, who is a faithful witness, the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Amen. That gives you three verses uh, that tells us it takes the blood uh, to cleanse us uh, and wash us white uh, uh, in his blood. Amen. Amen. The only way to wash your sin away is through his blood. I'm going to be ugly for a few minutes, all right? You cannot go to some of these churches they have and go in this little side closet and say, forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. I hear you, my son. Give me ten hell mares and cut the grass next week and God will forgive you. Let me tell you something. First off, He can't forgive you. Number two, it ain't by the works you do. It's through the blood of Jesus. You can't do enough work to get to glory. You've got to be forgiven by God Himself. You can't get in a closet and talk to somebody else and they do it. You can sit in my office all day long, but I can't can't forgive your sin. I can pray with you and God can forgive your sin. I got a friend of mine. We're close. We have golf together. We do a lot of things together. I love him. But he's Catholic. And he, he, he'll he go on Friday night and he'll drink and cuss and go to the bars and stuff. And then on Saturday, he goes to Mass and asks for forgiveness. He said, and I'm okay, I'll go to heaven. I said, no, I don't think you are. We try to play golf without talking religion. Because <laughs> it messes up both games. Amen. Because it's hard to preach up there on the green. Because you don't want, listen, I get wild enough in here, you don't want to see me out there with a golf club trying to preach. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Don't get in arm's length of that foot. Get further away. Cause... <laughs> but he believes that if he'll live a good moral life, he can drink as long as he don't get wild or nothing like that. Go to Mass, get in a little closet, ask somebody to forgive you, you go to heaven. No, you don't. And if I happen to die when I'm in my sin, then my wife can give the preacher $500 and he'll pray me out of purgatory. Absolutely not. The Bible says, as death finds you, so shall the judgment. Can't no preach. Once you're dead, can't, they can't pray you into heaven. You make your calling to go to heaven now. You make your choice now. But now, if you got a loved one that's dead and you want to give me a thousand dollars, I'll pray and tell you they're in heaven. <laughs> now I I ain't going truthfully I ain't got a clue, but I'll take you thousand dollars. If it makes you feel good, just give it here. But I'm telling you, you cannot they ain't no purgatory for them to go to. They go to heaven or hell. There's no in between. And I'm gonna hurt y'all's feelings. It ain't like Patrick Swayze, you die and you hang around down here helping people. Well, I'm going to help my girlfriend. Girlfriend, you better get saved before he, before, before you die. He ain't coming to help you. Once he's dead, he's just dead. 
And I ain't praying him out of purgatory for you. He ain't caught that yet. It'll get to whew, it'll get to him later. Amen. Whew. Amen. <laughs> it's a blood of cleansing. It takes the blood to cleanse. Amen. Let's see if we can wind this down for you. Amen. Number six, it is the blood of righteousness. Revelation 7, 14. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest, he said unto me, these are they which came out of great tribulation, washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Our robes are made white in the blood of Christ. All them new robes up in glory, they've all been washed in the blood. I can't think of anything that you stick in a washing machine and put red stuff in with it and wash it and it comes out white. Amen? But somehow God will take my black heart, wash it in red blood, and make it white as snow. God can do that. He has done that. Amen? Amen. Amen. I got a pure white heart. Now, I wouldn't take no pictures of this little heart in here that's thumping because it's got issues. Amen? But your heart is not this muscle that's thumping. We just, I call that a thumping gizzard. Okay? It, that's not the heart. When the Bible refers to your heart, it's talking about the center of your being, your essence, your soul. That's what it's talking about because this muscle in here ain't going to heaven. Bible said flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Your heart, my children are my heart. My church is my heart. Now, y'all are not this, are you? It just means y'all are the center of my existence. Y'all are what I exist for. To preach, to feed you, to help you in any way I can, to pray for you, to counsel with you, whatever you need, to marry you. You could have said amen. All right. <laughs> because without the marriage, there can't be a honeymoon. Okay. So you can't get to Hawaii on your honeymoon if you ain't got married. Where y'all going, Flo Villa? <laughs> Say amen. He's thinking about it. <laughs> he didn't know if he was going to go to Flow Villa or Jenkinsburg. He tried to figure it out. It'd be all right. Amen. The blood of righteousness. We are saved by the blood. And the last point to the message, the blood of overcomers. Revelation twelve eleven, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. We are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb, by being saved. You overcome sin. The word of your testimony overcomes the things and the trials and the troubles and tribulations of this world. That's why I always give you a chance to testify. Because by testifying, and, and we were talking about this last week, you don't have to get up and do nothing. Just stand up and say, I want to thank God I'm saved. Sit back down. Testimony doesn't have to be long drawn out. I get tickled with Mary. Because she built an eight-day clock testifying. And I talked to her a couple of weeks ago, and she said, uh, my, my sister is sick. My other sister is in the hospital with her husband. And, and she said, I really hate to get on the phone with her because once you get on the phone with her, she just yammers on and on. You can't get off. Runs in the family. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> It does. That's what she told me. And I thought, the pot called the kettle black. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Ain't it good to come over here and laugh? Yes, it, is. it is. Amen. Good. To overcome, we overcome by what? The blood of the Lamb, the blood of Jesus. And we overcome by the word of our testimony. Your testimony is what gets you victory. 
Your testimony is what gets you what you need. Your testimony that God has saved you is what helps you to overcome things. Because if you sit there and you just you, you, you go through the mully grubs, you cannot overcome. You get just get up and say, thank God I'm saved. And you'll be surprised at how much you can start to overcome. Amen. If you'll do that one Sunday and do it again the next Sunday and the following Sunday, you'll say a little more. I want to thank God I'm saved. Won't y'all pray for me? Sit down. And it won't take long. You're, you're, I want to thank God I'm saved. I want to thank God for all he's done for me this past week. He's just lifted me and took care of me. And y'all just pray for me. It'll just get longer and longer. It's practice. Because I've always said, if you're scared to get up in here and witness, testify, then I know you're not doing it out there. We're your family and we love you. You shouldn't be scared to stand up in here. This is where you practice at. I shout down here because I'm getting ready for heaven. I raise my hands down here because I'm getting ready for heaven. Yeah. You're practicing for when you get to glory. Because I promise you this. I don't know your life today. But each and every one of you is going to spend eternity in a church service. Well, what if I go to hell? You're going to be in a church service. Because I promise you today, absolutely everybody in hell is praying for salvation today. But it ain't coming. But they're praying for salvation. Every one of them can remember when God spoke to them and they rejected it. Because they have a memory. The Bible teaches us about the rich man that died and in hell lifted his eyes and he remembered his family that was left behind because he asked Abraham, would you send somebody to tell my family don't come? And Abraham said, they have the prophets and they have the preachers and everybody to preach to them. They got them. I'm not sending somebody back from the dead. Besides that, God sent somebody back from the dead. Jesus rose from the dead. And they still don't want to believe it. People still won't have it. But folks, you're going to spend eternity in a church service. You're either going to spend it in a prayer service in hell or you're going to spend it in a worship service in heaven. Church forever. How about that? Amen. Amen. And I've chose to go to the worship service. Amen. Amen. I want to go to the worship service. I want to shout and run and, and have a good time in heaven. I'm going to the worship service. You have to choose. You get to choose today what service you want to spend your eternity in. Do you want to spend it in worship in heaven, prayer service in hell? It's your choice. Your choice. But understand this. God has never sent anybody to hell. You go because you choose to go. You have the choice. When God made hell, he made hell for the devil and his angels. He did not make it for us. So if you go to hell, you go as an intruder. You choose that. It's your choice. Give us a verse of song while we stand this morning. I don't know your hearts today. I don't know where you stand with the Lord. But I know this. The Bible says to make your calling and election sure. That means to check up. That means to know where you stand with God. And we're here today. So if you're lost, you can be saved. You can come down here and talk to God. We'll pray with you. God will save you. If you're backslid, you can come down here. And just like the father took the prodigal son back, God stands here with outstretched arms. He'll take you back and just love you all kind of ways. And the good part to that message was he didn't judge his son for the wrong he had done. He just hugged him, loved him, and said, kill the fatted calf, let's have a party. Clean him up, put a clean robe on him, shoes on his feet, and a ring on his hand, dress him up. He never judged him. God won't judge you either. God will just take you back. All you got to do is come to Him. Maybe this morning you've got cares, you've got worries, you've got problems, things that are just binding on you, holding you down. Well, guess what? 
He said, cast all your cares, your burdens, everything that weighs you down. He said, cast it on me, for I care for you. He cares for you. God loves you this morning. And 